Hey, it's Philip Seagraves. We're going to do a little bit more real estate math today and focus on a concept that gives folks some trouble from time to time, and that is the modified internal rate of return. First, what are we talking about here? Why do we use this modified internal rate of return instead of just the standard internal rate of return? Well, a couple of main reasons. First is an internal rate of return can have multiple different solutions, multiple different values depending on the, the cash flows. If you have positive and then negative and then positive and then negative cash flows over the, over the course of an investment, you can have multiple different solutions, different internal rates of return, and um, your typical calculators or spreadsheet formulas can either give you an error um, or it requires you to choose a starting value um, in Excel to find a correct find a solution and you still may not know that you may not realize that that's not the only possible solution to an internal rate of return. Also the modified internal rate of return gives you a couple of choices. It gives you the ability to set a different finance rate meaning if you're gonna have to borrow money at one rate and you might also have a different rate of reinvestment. So as you get the cash flows throughout the course of investment, what are you going to do with that money? Are you going to assume that it's going to automatically be reinvested at the same rate of return that the project itself has? Well, that's probably not very realistic. You may take that money and pay off debt. You may take that money and put it in the bank. You may take it, put it in the stock market or other investments. So you need to, an opportunity to give an alternative uh, reinvestment rate. So when we take a look at the modified internal rate of return, we have these, these options. We have a finance rate, which is what we might borrow at to do the project, and we have a reinvestment rate. Solving internal rate of return doesn't require uh, fancy spreadsheets or functions on the calculator. If you just go step by step through the process, it's pretty easy. It's obviously a lot easier with a spreadsheet or a calculator that can handle uh, the cash flows separately and calculate uh, modified internal rate of return. But even the most basic calculator that can do exponent functions can handle a uh, an internal rate of return or a modified internal rate of return problem. So let's look at the steps. The first one is to discount all of your cash, your outflows to the present value. So let's look at how we would do that. Now I've color coded these in yellow. So the first one that we'll look at is in this investment, we're going to invest $325,000 in year zero at the beginning. And during the first year, we make $87,000. Second year, we end up having to pay out $10,000. And in the third year, uh, we the combination of selling the property and possibly the last year's income combined total give us $372,000 positive cash flow. So let's take our outflows, the investment that we make, and this money that we have to pay out, the 10000 and we'll discount those back to, to present value as of today. Well, obviously, we don't have to discount the present value of that investment because it happens today. But we need to take this $10,000 and get it back into today's dollars. And we use our, our finance rate right here. So a, the way we would simply do that with a calculator or in Excel is just take that value, the $10,000, and just divide it by one plus our finance rate which would be 1.1 and then we just raise that to the power of how many periods one period two periods so two periods if we divide that by the 1.1 squared in this case the ten thousand dollars has a present value of eight thousand two hundred sixty four dollars now we're just going to sum those up so any of these outflow values that we would have we could have uh, 36 periods 300 periods and any of those any of those outflows we would discount those back to today's dollars and just sum those up to come up with the present value of all of those outflows. Now we do the same thing with our inflows, except now we're going to come up with a future value. We're going to compound those values out to the terminal date. So our first inflow is $87,000. So now we're going to compound that out to the very end of our investment horizon. So we'll take that $87,000 and compound it forward for two periods, one period, two period, to this very end. So that $87,000, if we compound that by two periods, it's going to be worth 370, I'm sorry, $105,270. And if we also compound that 372,000 that we receive at the end out to the end, well, it doesn't grow because we get it at the very end, so that 372 is worth 372. 
the future value of that 372 is worth 372 because it doesn't have any time to grow. So we add those up. Now we have these two values. And again, we use the reinvestment rate here. Now often in a modified internal rate of return, we assume these are the same. I show them differently because Excel will let you use different values for these two. And it does make sense to allow for two different values. So we have an investment that we make at 333264 and it's going to grow to a future value of $477,270. Uh, well, how much growth is that? Well, it, that's $144,000. And the total, which is the 144 divided by the 333, is a 43.21% growth. Well, that's the total growth. Well, we need to find out what compound rate would yield the 43%. So simply to get this value, we just take the difference between these two, the 333 and the 477, we get 144. The 43 is simply the 144 divided by the 333. And we'll look at these uh, Excel formulas. We've just taken the, the G11, which is our value. If we double click this, we can see everything highlighted. And we divided that by the 333. Obviously, I had to change the sign there so it would work out correctly. And then over here, it's just a simple, the simple reverse of what we've done before. We know that there are three periods to get from the beginning to the end, one, two, three periods. So we have taken the original value, the 43%, we've added that, we've added a one to that to make it 1.4321, because if we want to find out what our growth is, we'd multiply 1.43 times our 333 to get this value. And then we are going to uh, solve for the compounded growth rate. We're going to raise that to the power of one third power of 1 over 3, so 3 being the number of periods. And at the end, just to get it back in terms that, that are normal to show in percentage terms, we just subtract that 1. If we didn't do that, it would just say 1.1272, which would be okay, but normally when we're talking about rates of return and investments, we just want to show it in percentage terms instead of that 1.12. Well, let's take a look at the Excel formula for doing that. Excel, all we do is highlight the values, these cash flows, we specify the finance rate, which is our C3 here. We specify our reinvestment rate, which is here. And we come up with the same value. Pretty easy to do it that way. And then if we were doing this on a hand calculator, it'd be just it'd be a, a simple step as well. We just discount this value, which we don't do anything. We discount that value, and we just add those up. We compound this value out two periods, and we add it to that value. We calculate the difference. We calculate the growth between these two values, and then we figure up the compounded growth rate that it would require to get to this over that same period. Now, another you know simple uh, way to do that, to calculate that on your hand calculator, and we'll just kind of show this, we would just equals this value plus 1, and that's going to give us that 1.43. We wouldn't want to do that in, in percentage terms, of course. And then what we'd simply do is, we'll go ahead and put some parentheses around that as we're doing this in Excel, and divide that by what was our, um, we're going to divide that by the, um, uh, we're going to, I'm sorry, we're going to raise that to the power of 1 over 3. So we're going to raise that value to the 1 over 3 power. And you'll see what value we come up with. And all we did earlier was take this value, and we just subtracted that one from it, and we came up with that same value. And that's the same thing you would just do on your hand calculator. Well, hopefully this has helped. I'm going to just scroll down here and show you another example. I'm not going to walk through all the details like we did a moment ago, but this shows five periods. We have uh, a million dollar investment, 20,000, 36,000 in income, a $25,000 outflow one year. Maybe we had to fix the air conditioning units on the building. Another 24,000, and we sell the building for $1.1 million. Now we have the same finance and reinvestment rates here. And in this case, we only end up with a modified internal rate of return of 3.39%. Again, the same steps could be done with a hand calculator that handles exponents. You wouldn't even have to have a fancy financial calculator. All right, signing off. Hopefully this will help everybody with modified internal rate of return. 
happy studying and study that real estate math it's the key to making good real estate decisions by